Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Zumi. So perhaps there's someone out there who has hurt your feelings, who has betrayed you so badly that you're finding it hard to forgive. Or maybe you've even made up your mind that you can never forgive that person, you know, all through your lifetime. Well, in today's video, I'll be sharing five reasons why you need to forgive whoever has hurt you, whoever has betrayed you as soon as possible. I'll be sharing my personal experiences and also backing whatever I have to say with scriptures to help you to understand the importance, the necessity for you to forgive as soon as possible. So if you are interested in learning more about what I have to say, keep watching. It's an obvious fact that each and every one of us as human beings are different. We have different personalities. We have different backgrounds. We have different ways that we process things. We have different levels of maturity. And when you consider that, it's obvious that there is no way we can stay on this earth and there will not be anybody that will ever offend you or hurt your feelings. Even the Bible says that offenses must surely come. That being the case, in our everyday life, there are times when we have to forgive and there are times when we have to be forgiven. Sometimes when the offense is not too serious, we find it easy to forgive. But at other times, the offense may be so serious or maybe it's something that is repeated and we feel like we cannot forgive. But in this video, I'm going to be sharing on five reasons why you need to always forgive. You know, the Bible says that we should forgive. It says that if our brother, if anyone offends us 70 times, seven times, we need to forgive. And of course, it's something difficult. We feel like, oh, I can't do this. No, but I'm not a saint. I can't handle this. The truth is that forgiveness is sometimes not just about the other person. It's also about you. It's also about your well-being. And that is where I'm going to be focusing this discussion on. So the first point is that unforgiveness can actually cause physical sicknesses and diseases. Okay, I've heard different stories of people that have developed maybe cancers and all manner of strange ailments just because they were unable to forgive. When we don't forgive, it's kind of when you are bitter, when you are hurting, it affects your body and your body begins to react in specific ways that are not the best for your health. So, for example, in my own case, I was around 16 years and there was this um, young brother in the church who liked seemed to like my elder sister. We didn't even know that he liked her. My elder sister is just like two years older than me. So he would follow us home. He would kind of, you know, be talking and preaching to us and all that. But my sister was sensing that maybe he was coming after her and she wasn't really interested in him. So one day he came home with us and I and my sister, as usual, we escaped. We went into the bedroom and we were just there changing, just hoping that when he's tired of staying, he would go away. That was how we used to process our own Like, Okay, if I don't want to hang out with this person, he can go whenever he feels like. But at some point, we realized that he was actually picking at us when my sister was trying to change her clothing. And thankfully, she noticed and she didn't undress. But the fact that he was there and willing to look at her changing her clothing, made us so disgusted. We felt like this brother that is always preaching and telling us, okay, don't use makeup, don't do this. Now you are doing this kind of thing. So I developed such a strong hatred for him that it, it became so bad. Every time I saw him, I, I, I would just, my whole body would just change. My, my, my physiology would just be negatively affected. And then with time, I noticed whenever I come to church and I see him, I would start feeling like throwing up. I would start having tummy ache, very severe aches. And I, like three, four, five times and more. There were several times that I had to be rushed from the church to the emergency because whenever I came to church and I saw him, I would just start feeling unwell. And from there, it would escalate into the need to go to the emergency. And it continued. I couldn't even figure out that it was because of him. I just knew that whenever I saw him, I would start feeling like throwing up. But then all through the whole service, this ailment will become worse until I will be rushed to hospital. And whenever I go to the hospital and I see the doctor, most of the times I get better because I'm not in the same environment as him. So one day I, I heard the message about the need to forgive and all that. And that was when I was able to make the connection between my sickness and that. And I found it hard to forgive, but I realized that I didn't want to continue going through this pain and all that. And I prayed and I asked God for help. It wasn't easy, but because... I saw the need for me to forgive, for me to have this freedom. 
I kept asking for help. Whenever I saw him and I started feeling like that, I would try to think good things about him and all that. And with time, the more I worked on that, I realized that I was able to over time forgive and all those symptoms went away. So that's just an example. I know that this, you may say, okay, this is just something that is trivial. It's not as serious. If you know the kind of betrayal I've experienced, you won't be talking about this. I'm just giving it as an ex example. I'm just trying to say that unforgiveness can cause physical ailments. The second reason why you need to forgive is because unforgiveness causes mental and emotional ailments. Okay. So when you don't forgive, when someone has hurt you so bad and you are not able to forgive it, first of all, it makes you to begin to distrust people. When you see people, you know, behaving in a particular way, you begin to think that, okay, this, you know, if this person can do this to me, in fact, I can't trust anybody. And when you don't trust people, you will begin to you know, send forth some kind of negative energies. You begin to behave in specific, in particular ways to people because you're already thinking this person is going to betray me. This person is going to hurt my feelings. And what happens when you are behaving in those ways that are not pleasant to other people, they are going to now start treating you in response to the way you are treating them. And what are you doing? You are creating a vicious cycle of people that will keep hurting you, people that will keep betraying you. And there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. So when you are carrying that hurt around without meaning to, you will end up hurting other people. You will find yourself beginning to, you know, behave like the person that has hurt you. Okay. And that is not what you want in your life. The third thing that unforgiveness does to you, if you choose to harbor it, is that it prevents you from moving forward in life. Okay. When you hold on to unforgiveness, it puts you in a place, it kind of puts you in a cage. You are stuck in that moment where you were betrayed. You are stuck in that moment, that period where you felt that heartbreak. And what you will see yourself doing is whenever you are with people, you will start telling the story of what happened to you, what these people did to you, what that person did to you. And it's just like, you can't move forward if you are dwelling on that in the past. You can't move forward if you're in that cage. It's just like you're, you're trying, you're in a car driving. You want to go to the shop. And instead of you to be driving and looking ahead, looking on the road, you know, where you are going to, you keep looking at the rear view mirror. You can't, so, you, 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 you can't go far with that. Yes, we look in the rear view mirror just to check, okay, what's going on at the back. But for you to dwell on it and you're not just focusing on the road where you're going to, you are going to get into an accident. And that's what happens to many people. When you are dwelling in that past, in that place of hurt, in that place of unforgiveness, it's kind of ends up making you not to move forward. You even begin to attract those kind of people that hurt you because that is the energy you are, you know, releasing out there. And that brings me to the fourth point, what unforgiveness does to you, why you need to run away from unforgiveness. The fourth thing it does to you is that you keep exude, you know, giving out this negative energy. Whenever people come around you, they know, okay, this person is coming. Oh, this person is always bitter. This person is always complaining. This person is always murmuring. You don't want to be that kind of person that whenever you are, people are around you, you are looking for faults in people because when you can't forgive and you, be, you, you are suspicious of people and you begin to find faults. And so you might end up, if you are someone that you are dwelling in a place of unforgiveness and it has, you know, degenerated into a place of bitterness. You, you, there's this cloud, this heaviness around you and it keeps dispelling favor away from you. People won't feel free to come close to you because when they come, they may not exactly physically see what is going on. But because you have that distrust, because you have that bitterness, it just, you know, kind of keeps coming out of you and people don't want that. You might be wondering, why is it that, oh, since this person did this thing to me, everybody is just avoiding me. You know, people are not my friends. It could be the energy, the negative energy that you are unintentionally giving out because you can't let go, because you can't forgive. Point number five and the last, why you need to forgive is the most important, in my own opinion. When you can't forgive others, when you keep holding people in your heart, God cannot forgive you. We know the Bible, the Lord's Prayer, which talks about and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What that 
um, phrase, what that sentence, what that statement is saying is that, Lord, to the extent I'm able to forgive others, please forgive me to that extent. So if I always forgive people, no matter how they hurt me, then please, Lord, forgive me like that. But Lord, if I don't forgive, if I hold on to some of the things they've done, then Lord, please, whenever I offend you, don't forgive me. Hold that thing I have done. Please don't forgive me. This is a confession we make every day. And that is how it is. There's this story in the Bible, a parable, which tells us, is just kind of showing us the importance of forgiveness in God's eyes. It talks about the fact that there was this um, servant that was owing the master a lot of money, millions of, uh, you know, talents, call it millions of dollars. And he didn't have the means to pay. So this person was in the wrong. He had done something really bad. He needed to pay back and he didn't have the means. And God was about to, the, the master was about to put him into prison. And he knelt down and he said, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. I will try and pay back. I will try and pay back. And then the master looked and said, hmm, if I put this person in prison, he, can't, he doesn't even have the means to work and pay me back. You know what? I forgive you. You don't need to pay me back. And this man that was forgiven stepped out and immediately he stepped out. He saw another servant, somebody else that used to work with him, a colleague that was owing him a penny that has offended him just a tiny bit. And then he said, eh, what? You, you have not paid me back. The Bible says he held him by the throat and he was choking him and said, I am going to put you in the prison. You will, ma I'll make sure you pay me the last before I forgive. And then the other servants saw what was going on and they ran to their king and said, look, king, you forgive this man, but someone is owing him a penny and he wants to send that person to prison. And the master was so angry and said, I forgive you to the last. I forgive you. You were owing me so badly and I forgive you, but you can't forgive this. You know what? Put him in prison. He's not coming out until he pays the last farthing. It's just a picture that that parable tells us how God sees us. Each and every one of us, we are not perfect as human beings. Every day we make mistakes in the way we think, in the way we talk, in the way we relate with people. We make mistakes every day. There are things we do that we think is normal, but in God's eyes, they are not normal. They are offensive, but he keeps forgiving us every day. So what, that's why he says, what is it that we cannot forgive? I'm not here to say that forgiveness is easy. I have been in a place of unforgiveness. And in many ways, I'm also still healing from lots of traumas and hurts I have encountered in my life. But I have chosen, I've come to an understanding that unforgiveness doesn't pay. And that is why I'm here to encourage you, if not for anything, for your own well-being, for your mental well-being, for your emotional well-being, for the sake of your physical well-being. For the sake of your relationship with God, for the sake of your relationship with other people, for the sake of your future, because you can't move forward, you can't go forward if you are still stuck in your past. I want you to consider forgiving. I know it's not easy. And so I'm going to be making a different video where I'm going to share some more about some of the experiences that I have had that traumatized me so badly. And how I am, you know, progressing on this journey of forgiveness. Some of the tips that have helped me that will also help you. So I hope you found this video um, helpful. I hope it is encouraging you to think about that, your decision not to forgive. You need to do something about it. You need to fight for your future by letting go of unforgiveness. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you've not yet subscribed to my channel so that you can receive notifications when I upload new videos on this channel. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.